not gonna lie. So when I was younger, I would say like, you know how we all go through this identity crisis type thing when we're younger. That's good. Like, yeah, kind of like you. You don't want to be like these. friends. Any friends? Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so do, do wonders like AI anomalies. Her I know that right. Saga, who was on, rap on, on Saint top. Beats. You're definitely more lyrical, so like you're not. I actually knew a guy in Miami that he was going to the same gym. And I tweeted like last week that someday I'm gonna have a song with him. I don't know how it's gonna happen, but it's gonna happen. Um, so. <laughs> well, what up, everybody? This is Mitch Durrell, and this is the Mitch Durrell Show. This is season two, episode. 10 and today i got a homie of mine special guest zay hill what's up bro how you doing yes sir bro i'm doing great bro excited to be on here thank you for letting me hop on with you bro of course man is it is it zayford is it like zay zay twan what's your name oh <laughs> uh, no nah, my real name is zaya bro my yep. mama just she wants to be weird and spell it with an x gotcha. <laughs> so you ran with it. well i'm glad to have you on here man so i was actually thinking you were one of the first people I'm like knew of and like kind of connected with in Christian hip hop. Like you were one of the first people I ever worked with. Um, so what got you, actually I'll do the first question I typically do. How did you find Christ in like the church? Were you born into it? Did you find it later in life? That type of thing. Yeah. So like I was born in church. My mama, she's a preacher as well as like my uncle was one. Bro. So I always grew up in the church. Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, Man, I strayed away for a minute at a very, very young age. Man. Really? Uh, I lived in the rough side of Cleveland. And, uh, man, we was up the street from, like, Anthony Sowell. He was, like, a mass murderer, bro. He was, like, mm -hmm. houses down, and we walked by. So when the information came out about him, what he was doing, man, I said, screw it, bro. I'm about to go get involved with some gangs or some right. stuff just right. so that I can get protection. He said, yeah. I strayed away. Most deaf. But I ran back to Christ. So I mean, shoot, that, that's how it all started. Like, I grew up in it. I always knew it. I was just ignorant. <laughs> was there a certain moment that kind of made you go back? Or was it just like one day you were like, nah, man, like, I got to go. I got to go back, you know? Man, it was moving down here to Alabama from Cleveland to Alabama. Mm -hmm. It was just like, man, you know, you had to run back, man. Can't keep going off into the same things and falling after people that don't really care for you. They just want what you can do. Man, so that's how I really ran back, bro. So how did you find, how did you get into music in general and hip hop specifically? Like, what was that? Was that something you were listening to it from a young age? You find it later? I found it way later in life. <laughs> yeah, so I wasn't even like allowed to, like I started off as a seven day event before I became- Oh, like, really? And like, bro, we couldn't listen to no secular music. Mm -hmm. But uh, for some reason, when we moved to Cleveland, man, like I fell in love with Lil Wayne. And yeah, just, say, dude. I guess same. you could. Tell, <laughs> I guess you could tell because the amount of features I do, bro. I try to be like Wayne, bro. <laughs> like, definitely, bro. Fell in love with Wayne, and then bro, I just fell in love with hip hop ever since. But Wayne was Wayne That's was crazy. Everything. So we got a similar story then, because I so I found it later. I wasn't allowed to listen to it, um, mm -hmm. and then once I got so once I got to middle school, because um, I don't know what year you were born. I was born in '96. Um, I'm 97. That's what, okay, yeah. So you couldn't avoid Lil Wayne when we were in middle school, high school. Like he uh -huh. ran the world, he was on everything. So I listened to the radio and I was like, rap is amazing. And Lil Wayne's like the best, he was like the only rapper I really listened to for a while. Like him and all of YMCMB. Like, you oh, know, up here yeah. in Door, you can have stations named after like an, like I had a Lil Wayne station, a Tunchi station, a Carter Two station, a Carter Three station. Like I had no ceiling station. I listened to, only Lil Wayne, I thought he was like amazing. And so he got me into hip hop too. Um, what when, what took you from being a fan of it to saying, yo, I wanna like start making music myself? Man, it's wild, bro. Cause like when I was out there banging, bro, like the OGs used to like tell me like, you can't get in trouble in school. Mm -hmm. like, Cause stuff they was having me doing, but like you can't get in trouble cause I'll get you in trouble with this. So like, they'll be hard on me about things. So I couldn't just like in middle school get to bumping with people, bro. <laughs> like right, they right. made me mad. So it was the lunchroom table, bro. I, they started beat, but beating on the table and that's how they roast. I said, shoot, I ain't allowed to fight. So might as well start trying to talk. And then like, it literally happened. I freestyled for the first time. I was like, oh crap, I flamed him, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and it robbed. Yo, 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 it's your boy YJO with Enoch Flow Records. Letting you know if you need beats, engineering, graphic design, website creation, Enoch Flow is the way to go. I'ma tell you why. why? Why? Beats and engineering. 
All beats are produced by yours truly, exclusively with no leases. And I'll even throw engineering in there for you. Graphic design and website creation. Bring your next single EP or album artwork to life with DC Graphics, led by Damian Clinton, best graphic designer in the business. There's no cap. Get all these services and more only at Enoch Flow Records. Peace. Blamed him, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and it robbed. Like, bro, it was crazy. The girl be crushing on in school. She was all hype, like, oh, right. and I made her smile, too. <laughs> oh, snap. I'm in there. Right. Bro, I never thought it would have turned into this, bro. Man, <laughs> bro, that's, that's crazy. Really epic. No, it's crazy how, like, one moment can kind of turn into something bigger. So, exactly. when, did you ever dabble with making, like, secular music, or was there, when you first oh, started? of course. Was, like, <laughs> was it secular when you started? Of course, man. I started off, it, it was a back and forth moment until I just said, you know, this is all God's day mine. Mm-hmm. Bro, like, I started off doing secular music and it was trash because I was <laughs> recording with a laptop and I had a phone and I was yep. <laughs> recording like that. <laughs> and then, then when I got down here, I was just rapping about anything. But mm-hmm. I had like a little group that was popping off around the city and secular nice. music. It was called Rose Gang. I don't know what we was on. <laughs> That's why I got the rose on my head. Oh, wow. <laughs> Man, and it, it was it was popping off around the city. And the guy said, right, if you do this, I'll give you the world, but you won't have me. But if you I give know. it up and do me, I'm going to give you everything that I could give you. So I chose Jesus. It was tough, bro, because I'm telling you, bro, the girls influenced a lot of what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> when Rose Gang was up, it was no joke. Bro. That's hilarious. <laughs> so, like, how did, did you know about Christian hip hop already? Like, how did you learn it? Because I, so me, I was really late to even knowing about, like, I knew who Lecrae was that was like it until maybe like 2016 like i didn't know christian hip-hop was a thing so like how did you find out about it if that makes sense uh so uh when i was slowly starting to get back into running the christ uh one of the youth ministers at uh the church i was attending at the time uh she had asked me to rap at church and i was like you can rap about god like that's the thing that's the thing <laughs> i thought it was it and then she said yeah and it was this other rapper coming in his name was like chico bro it was mm-hmm. he's still like cool to talk to every good moon bro but uh he was coming in he said yeah bro we're gonna rap over the eminem 25 the light beat and i was like i never heard the song right so <laughs> i ran back home grabbed my mom's laptop and i typed in eminem 25 the life christian mm-hmm. rap something bro and for some reason, the first song that popped up wasn't even that. It was McCray Don't Waste My Life. Wow. And I clicked on it and I was like, they actually rapping about Jesus. <laughs> and I remember running to my mom's room, telling her about it. It was dope. And then next thing you know, I found Cannon's Eagles. Yeah. And I was like, oh, snap. I put the whole team on it. <laughs> it was just, it was, from then on, I, I fell in love with Christian hip hop, not even thinking about doing the genre. I just fell in love with what it was. Like, people actually rapping about God. And it was hard, bro. Got you. So, no, that's super dope. So you kind of touched on it a second ago, but like you are definitely known for doing features and collabs. So I don't know if you even, if it's possible to remember this, but do you remember the first feature you did? The first time someone was like, yo, can you be on a song of mine um, or anything like close to that? Uh, I can't count my family because I'll be cheating. Right. But I think <laughs> It was forever ago. What was this man's name? It was crazy because it was the first time I heard of Portia Love before she popped up. It was oh, this really? Dude, uh, dang, what was it? I think it was this dude named Church Boy Will. Mm-hmm. We decided to hop on a song, and I didn't know what turned into this. That was the first one that I did with TOJ, like in general, bro. You know what year that was? <sighs> dang, bro. Uh, <laughs> I think like 2015, 2016. Wow, I can't remember. a minute ago. So, yeah. what? How do I explain it? So like, did you ever make a conscious decision to be like, I want to be super accessible. I want to do as many features as God will allow me to do. Like, I just want to work. Like, when did you, is that just something that happened? Was it like your goal? Nah, uh, so intentionally it wasn't because I wanted to do what everybody else does. I'm about to be marketable to myself and you finna had to want me on your song. I'm gonna tell you no. That was my mindset until it happened to me and God said, see, I told you not to be like that. You're about to shift a whole momentum, make a whole momentum shift in a genre. And I was like, man, God, I can't do that. No one knows who I am. Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna name the artist, but it was a live stream of an artist when I was first coming. It was like the first time Rapzilla ever posted me. I'm excited, you know, yep. we all are. 
when Rabbit's little first post us, bro. <laughs> and uh, when they first posted me on there, I'm excited. I felt confident. I was in somebody, a bigger artist live stream. And I was just like, man, please let me get a chance on the song. Blah, blah, blah. And he said, I don't even know you. And I was like, I just got posted on Rapzilla. I promise you, that means I'm good. Right, right. Like, no, you're trash. Like, oh, no. You said you're trash. And it's a Christian hip hop artist. Me and him have talked about it. We cool. We asked. I'm not putting the information out there. And he's a pretty big artist today. But uh, he sat there and basically told me no. And I'm like, dang, bro. Like, because I didn't have clout, I can't get a feature from you. Even if I was willing to pay, you didn't yeah. want to work with me because I wasn't cool enough. And it like lit a fire inside of me. And on that night, I sat there. And I ran to my mom because I was hurt, bro. Like, I'm like, dang, I thought, like, I saved up. Like, I, I mm -hmm. asked some people that knew his price mm -hmm. and everything. And it wasn't because of the talent. It was because I wasn't cool. And I sat there and I said, man, I'm never going to be that guy. And from that moment on, I'm like, I'm working with everybody. Mm -hmm. And, bro, that was at the time where I was doing features for, like, $10 just right. because I'm like, bro, I need some because I'm about to try my hardest to get my all on this. But, bro, like. I want to get on everybody's song. And before I knew it, it turned from one feature to 300. Right. <laughs> and then from 300 to 500. To, I done went through three different computers oh and deleted goodness. files to save space. That, and that's how it is, bro. It's crazy. No, like, I respect that a ton. Because, like, I so I got started in Christian Hip Hop probably around 2018, I guess. And I remember I had this song um, called Loving You. It was back when I did my, so I did my yeah. Dreadhead Lando uh, yeah, I remember that Star Wars theme. I thought you were dope because you did your, your Power Rangers theme project. But I was like, yeah. I, I think you were the first person I like paid to be on a song of mine that wasn't like a homie of mine. Because I was like, I want like an auto tune sounding thing, but I can't do that at all. Um, yeah. So let me hit like this guy up because he does features. Um, and I remember you were mad quick about it. And I was like, it's super dope. And I kind of, that kind of started me wanting to collab with more people. So I, I definitely respect the wanting to be accessible not you know if someone wants to work with you it kind of means something you know like someone seeks you out and says i want to i want you on my song i feel like we should be less about like oh is this a great look for me or is it are you good enough how many streams do you get you know like this person exactly. is willing to pay you to be on their art you know um so i definitely respect you for that and i definitely respect your work ethic because it's not like it's it takes two seconds to do a feature. Like you gotta write it, record it, save it, send it off. You know, like how do you no, no have the time? I guess to to, <laughs> to do these features. Right. It, the best way I can say, you know, basically, uh, you know, we talk about Zika bring the dry bones. Like, you no, know, and the, the thing was when he was in the valley. God said, do you believe I can bring these bones to life? He said, God, that's something only you know. And that's how I can say that to relate. Only God knows, bro. It's only 24 hours a day. And I can't explain to you how I do this, bro. Like, I don't go to sleep till like 5.30 in the morning sometimes. And they'll wake up at like 10. And it's just the dedication. Because I'm like, man, somebody was willing to reach out to me, get me on a song. They want me to help them, bro. Because I'm not just like the average guy. I'm just not going to hop on your song and not help you. Right. Like, I'm going to use every outlet I possibly can to try to get a playlist, to try to call somebody to hop on, bro. Or we even pitch it out to certain people, bro. But yeah, man, it, bro, it's, it's a lot. And then on top of that, you know, playing piano, mm. I'm now a, in the process of becoming a youth pastor. And like, yeah. it's just switching ministries, bro. It's it's a lot in now YouTube, bro. It's, yeah. it's a lot, bro. Okay. So, man, only God knows, bro. No, you definitely got one of the best work ethics. I remember it's it's funny too because like people know this. Like my guy Dayton, I remember like half a year, a year ago, he was like, "Yo, I think I got the most features in C." And before he could even finish, people were like, "Nah, Zay Hill got the most. He got like a thousand features." And Dayton's like, "I don't. No, no, no. Trust me, you, Zay has more features than you. Like, because you're just you're known as that guy." Um, I think it's a dope thing. So something I wrote is, and I added this last. I forgot about this, but you were almost not a Rapzilla freshman. And I remember how like, think like for me, that's like mind blowing that that could have happened. So mm -hmm. do you remember the year where you thought you were going to get it? I, yep. I think that they made a new rule that year that you couldn't have a certain amount of projects or it was a certain Ooh. amount of streams or something that I remember you did. I don't remember what year this was. It might've been like 2018, 2019. Um, yeah. How did you like feel then? And then now that you've actually made the list, is it like, are you glad? Is it something that you're, it was a goal of yours? Did that make up for yeah. the disappointment? 
Of course it was, man. So like the year that I felt like I was supposed to make it was the year Poetics made it because you know at the time me and Poetics were doing everything together. All right. But uh, the thing was they had a rule basically saying like you know so much work that you can do and it was always one of the rules. But the coolest thing was it, man. God used that same thing to encourage me because I didn't become spiteful. Mm -hmm. I didn't get mad about the list. I didn't even talk down on their list. I said, man, screw it. I'm just gonna keep working. Excellent. Not even knowing that, you know, that year, I remember Radzilla's comment section, it was just a small group of people saying, man, Zay deserved his list. Yeah. Drop the rule. Then the next year it happened and I didn't make the list. Zay deserved to make it. Drop the rule. It right. got so bad that next year of so many people, they ended up having to change the rule just yeah. for me. <laughs> like, oh, that was the that was the coolest thing ever, man. Like, I can't even explain the excitement. My cousin still has the video. Uh, we actually just use it for his vlog because that's story time, which is really? coincidentally cool. Right but, <laughs> uh, man, where uh, we sat there and I remember me and him was sitting in the booth. We was working, bro. And then next thing you know, they dropped the list. And I'm trying to check to see if one of my homies made it. Right, right. And like, I look and I see my face on cover. I'm like, did they make a mistake? And right. then they said, if you're dope, you're dope. This list. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm happy. Because I'm like, if you see yourself on the cover, you're guaranteed. Like without, so I, I felt confident to know I'm in there. So I'm already celebrating. Right. And I remember the night that Ob announced on the uh, announced who the freshman was. I it was weird because I actually dropped a tear because I'm like, dang, it wasn't the the battle that I try to fight. And even if I felt I deserved it, my God knew the perfect timing to exactly. show somebody else that man, there's people that's gonna fight on your behalf if you stay obedient to Him. So it was dope to see that, bro. And I told everybody. Hey, what's going on everybody? B Plus here. Thank you so much for checking out yet another recap countdown video. I have a great one prepared for you. As always, we're going to be taking a look at Mission's latest project entitled Less Is More. Now, Mission is a vet in this Christian hip hop space. He's been around for quite a few years. I actually kind of categorize him more on the gospel rap side of things. But however you categorize him, one thing is for sure, he keeps getting better and better and better. If this is your first time checking out Mission's work, you're in for a treat. Now, if this is your first time checking out a recap countdown video really quickly, here's how I run things. I give you my five favorite bars, my four favorite beats, my three favorite tracks, my two favorite features, and I run everything out with one final recap. Once again, thank you so much for being here. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel, and let's get into this recap countdown. Five bars. Ain't no woman like the one I got. You know, if I had them packs on me, shit, spin that block. No cap, if I pass her the blick, shit, take that shot. But it says she prayed for me when the things got hot. Yeah, they went and beat me. If I be going hard, I probably should sleep. I know I just ate, but I still gotta eat. I pull up to the table, they had them a beat. I don't say what I'm planning, I'm moving the street. I spray it with passion, I'm moving the streets. Y'all moving with snakes, y'all giant crease. I had to sit up and pray in the morning. Please do not hit me unless it's important. I'm interested in making a fortune. You got a spot on the team if you're fortunate. I let it come when it Come with you force it. I'm trying to walk out my faith as a force. How many times I'm gonna say it ain't for me? Okay. Say he's still max, my mom made it for me. Okay. He got a bag and taking care of his kids. I have to tell him he's just changing what the stigma is. Do some cash at his wife, he got her hair pink and her nail pink. Working together, they've been handling the business. <laughs> this for the ones committing offenses. This for the victim, it's for the addicted. This for the dealers. This for the ones that thought they sense ain't fit for forgiveness. This for the ones that's not mentioned. This for the poor. Now, Mission is one of those rappers that when he speaks, is really coming from a very real and genuine place. I really liked his line on Diamond, where he placed a very high importance of a praying wife in your life, and that goes for both spouses. Um, that's a very important thing. Uh, next up, I like his line on Generally Speaking 3. I like the John Kreese Karate Kid reference there. That one really stood out to me. Okay, so next up, I really enjoyed uh, the entire song I'm back, but the particular line that I've chosen there, I really enjoyed it just because it talked about every area of life. I mean, we pray, we work hard, we dream big, but ultimately we leave it up to God, and it's in His hands for just how things uh, kind of turn out, and we don't force anything. Okay, so the boss of everybody that was in them comment sections, because they don't know how much that made me feel. Yeah, because I remember the narrative almost felt like it was like you outworked the list, you know, like it was you, you did yeah. well. And it's kind of like, what's the point in that? Like, Ed, you're like a household name, basically. Like, pretty much everyone yeah. in Christian Pop knows who you are. And I think that's like you had been on, uh, I remember they even said this. I think Justin might have said this. Shout out, Justin. But I think he was like, oh, Zay doesn't need the list. He's like been on a Canon project, which is like, yeah, it's true. Yeah, okay. But it's also like, it's almost like, yeah, he's been on a Canon project. Like, that's another thing that, why he should be on the list. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I think that's a great story in a, in a, you know, definitely a story to tell and there's a lesson in there. Um, so tough question. 
what would you say are some of the challenges of being an artist? Just like the stuff that comes with being an artist that people from the outside that aren't artists have no idea about, where it's just like, yo, this is like, sometimes I want to quit type stuff. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, it's the, it's the ability to know how bad you want it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's always been the hardest thing for me because uh, you get caught up in numbers, which no artist can say they don't because you do with human. Yep. And you get caught up in the fear of something flopping. Mm -hmm. uh, the best thing that I could ever say to any artist that had them type of mindsets is, bro, like, remember your why. Like, it had to go from a point for me of wanting to be the guy to saying I want to serve the guy. Yeah. Like, it had to get to the point of being like, man, I don't care if the next song I dropped got 5,000 streams in three months. I'm, I know that within them 5,000 streams, somebody heard Christ. Like, I, I brought somebody back home. And uh, in the midst of doing that, God blesses that, man. And uh, it's tough, bro. And another thing is just obedience to hear God in the art, bro. Like, mm -hmm. man, I can't tell you, I got an archive full of photos of songs that I just want to release. And God said, ah, no, you're prideful. I'm like, God, this is a hit, cuz. Like, I'm <laughs> arguing with him. He's like, no, you're not dropping it. Bro, I actually could do trap music. I could real life rap rap, bro. But he's like, nope, you're only dropping the autos and stuff. Like, Why, bro? Like, I'm tired. Of like Rich was over here and he was uh looking at some of my archives, bro. And we was like listening through. He's like, he got some bangers. Yup, why you why you keep dropping the sad boy music? Well, <laughs> man, he said it, he said it best. He said, bro, once you drop the edge, you ruined your archive. I said, bro, I know, bro. That's hilarious. Bro. I, but yeah, bro, that it's it's always a struggle of realizing how bad you want it. And mm -hmm. uh if you want it that bad, bro, you gotta dedicate. I mean, late night, early mornings, bro. Get your sleep on days, bro. Take some rest. But if you if you know that there's work to be done, get it done. Yeah. It's tough, but I, I'm I'm making it a goal for me to be the evidence of hard work. That's that's what I want it to be. I want to be able to sit back 10, 15 years from now and be able to tell somebody I only got to this point I am now because I worked so hard for what I wanted. Like it's already happening, bro. I do this full time. Yeah. Like, I came incredible. up from the slums, bro. Like the slum slums, bro. And it's to the point, this lifestyle that God has given me and the work that he's given me from doing this is being able to elevate the faith in my cousins and my my siblings, my sister and my mom. And so I'm like, well, shoot, if they could do it, then I could do it. Now I see family members stepping out on faith like mm -hmm. I'm starting a business. I don't know how it's going to work, but I'm starting a business. I see my own mother do it. Like, and then she was able to hire my sister on. And now I see one of my cousins, she's starting up a business. And now it's going to get to the point where she's going to hire other people on. Like, Man, that's that faith, bro. And I, I'm grateful for it, bro. Like, Thanks, brother. I, that's crazy noble, bro. <laughs> I, I, I respect yeah. you a ton, man, for real. Um, let's see, we're about at the end. But so positively, what are, what's like your favorite thing about being an artist? Is it like, because I for me, it's kind of hard to answer that. Like, I love writing a ton. I love recording. I love release day is one of my favorite things. Like, I got a song dropping at midnight yeah. today. Um, what's like the thing where you're like, this, I love this every time. This is my favorite thing. <laughs> My favorite thing about being an artist has got to be the fans, bro. And it's, it's not even because they sing your songs. It's, there's somebody that can relate to the music that I make, sometimes freestyling. Yeah. Like, The Edge was a freestyle, and I didn't expect what to happen with that freestyle. Like, And, and the crazy thing is, man, being so open to know that I am completely unashamed of the genre I am. I don't mm -hmm. call myself a rapper. I am a Christian hip-hop artist, and I say that with the top of my lungs. So when people see me at an event, they they just know to expect that I'm bringing God in a way that they can never expect it, bro. Like, mm -hmm. pulling up to shows, bro. And, like, they think that it's a rap concert, then boom, I flip an altar call out of nowhere. I, I, People, somebody said it before. If you see Zay bring the keyboard out, oh, he taking y'all to church. Like, <laughs> like it is it's wild, bro. But it's the most exciting thing, man. That's that's my favorite thing ever. Is is the love that people get from hearing the music that I'm mainly freestyle or just like yeah. I, what I take lightly, they take at heart. Like I've seen people come to me saying like. They, they're bleeding because they're cutting their self. And I was able to save them from stop cutting their self. I done seen people whose mom and dad have been going through divorce and a song I wrote helped them get through it or songs I made to save marriages or brought somebody from sh almost jumping off a bridge to running to Christ, man. That that vulnerability of knowing that what I think could be little is something so much bigger. So that, that's what I love, man. That's a fact, bro. There was, like, there was literally somebody not long ago who made a list of like the artists that helped them get through like the day. And it was like Linkin Park, NF and like Mitch Durrell. And I'm like, that type of stuff is like, yeah. you can't think about. Cause it's like, 
yo, I made this song in my living room on my, mm. you know what I'm saying? On my computer wrote it in like 30 minutes, you know, just put it out and it's helping somebody like get through life. Um, and like I said, if it's even just one person, that's like a huge deal. Cause that's a soul. Exactly. So, um, here's a question for you. Why are you so tall? But like people don't know that <laughs> until they meet you in person. Like, so I I knew your height already because I think somebody had mentioned it on Twitter. But then I met you in person recently at that Atlanta event. And it's like, you're even taller in person. Like, why are you so tall? Why did you play basketball, bro? Bro, I don't know <laughs> why I'm linky because my mom's not tall, my dad's not tall. It just came out of nowhere, bro. Like, I'm 6'5", bro. Good. And, and the case thing was, bro, I gave up football to do this. Like, I actually was going to go play football at uh, – a couple of universities had offered me, man. I was going to Muskingum because I wanted to start off at a very small school. They mm -hmm. basically told me I was starting, so I turned down like <laughs> any other option of red shirt. Right. You, you saying I'm playing, I'm playing. Bro, and I, it was literally after my graduation, I sat there and I was like, I don't want to do it. I want to rap. And my mom, she was like, God told me to tell you to do that too. I was like, wait, he told you? So this is just me thinking it. All right, bro, right. So I'm rapping. Bro, so that's the vibe, bro. So I don't know why I'm tall, but hey. It's funny because people- weird, bro. People can't tell, like, I don't know what it is, but there's something about you online that it doesn't scream six. Like, I think I thought you were taller than me. I'm 5'8", but yeah. I didn't think you were 6'5". Like, can you dunk? <laughs> Man, yes, I can. I just, whenever I'm in the mood to, if I get a good stretch in, I can, bro. <laughs> That's funny, bro. Let's see. Um, question that I was hoping to not have to ask people anymore, but now I have to again. Um, well, technically I gotta ask it this way. I'm hoping the pandemic ends fully someday, but now, you know, starting back up again, but how has it affected you and like your process? Like, I know some people that used to go to, I don't know if you recorded a studio or at home, but I know some people recording got harder, shows, there was less shows, uh, but for other people it was like, gave them more time to do different things. So how does, how has it affected you? Man, it kept me in the house. Uh... Mm -hmm. I could I could tell you from the aspect of pandemic, uh, it hurt me in a mental mind in a mental state, but it also blessed me because through the through the uh, isolation, that's what I want to say, of having to stay inside, I found something greater. Uh, mm -hmm. I was exposed to a lot of my flaws, which sucked, <laughs> and then mm -hmm. I was also exposed to a lot of people that was around me. And uh, it actually, as it slowly stopped, and I, I don't know, I guess it's restarting again. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm more more prepared for what I have to do because I've learned so much through it. But I mean, music wise, man, I, I record in the crib, bro. I, I wasn't really going out doing shows. Like I'm just now starting to do it tonight. Okay. <laughs> like I, I do <laughs> church shows, bro. You're right. I, I pull up to church events and and because my music is, is a worship vibe for real, bro. But uh, yeah, so I mean, it didn't really do too much to me, but it did expose a lot of my weaknesses and, and had me go deeper in the word to figure out what I got to do to fix it, though. Very dope. I definitely think it's been it's been a blessing and a curse in a lot of different ways, but I know some yeah. good has come out of it for a lot of people. Um, so do you have any, I know you're always working on music. Do you have anything specific you're working on? You got anything coming soon that you're planning? Uh, yeah, uh, so I'm working on an album right now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and I'm I working on it because it, I don't know, bro. I went through this season of like pain, and mm -hmm. God said, "All right, I took you through it, so you can do this." I'm like, "You ain't have to do that, OG. Like, yeah, you kind of made me feel this pain and suffering for you." To, but the album is is talking about you know worshiping even when it hurts or like fighting through it even when it's worse, man. Mm -hmm. and, it's been the best thing ever, bro. It's it's going to be another album of crap of features because why not? It's me. Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a, it's pretty dope, but it, 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 that's what I'm excited about. So right now, I think these next few songs, I don't know if they're going to be on the album or not, but I'm just emptying the clip. <laughs> so oh, <that's> smart. <laughs> it's pretty dope, man. I'm, I'm excited for it. Uh, it's, it's some of the best work I had. I, I wish I could say about a lot of trap music on it, but it's talking <laughs> about when it hurts. So uh, be ready for the sad boy music. Be ready to cry. <laughs> Be ready to get very emotional. Be ready to go to church. And then we might turn up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be one of them things, man. It's it's, it's crazy because I want to make the album for people. But God's saying, no, I want you to expose your flaws, expose mm -hmm. your wrongs. So I hate getting personal with God. Nah. Um, <laughs> it's necessary. Yeah, it, it's, it's right. Because hey, through, through, through this music, through me, somebody's going to find him. So I got to. Amen, bro. Uh, so tell the people if they don't already know where they can find your music, find you 
to book you for shows, find you on social media, get in touch with you, any of that? Most definitely. My DM's always open. I don't believe in having no requests. So if you DM me, I'm going to see you. Uh, when I see you, I don't know, but I'm going to see you. <laughs> email zayhill18 at gmail.com. Y'all hit that mug. Talk to me about anything. And uh, I don't care who you are. You can't beat me in Madden. So that the PS5, <laughs> okay. always ready for that. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> PS5, always open for that. The YouTube finna come back up, uh, I think this week. Yeah, or one of these days I shot the video. It's just fun. But so, I mean, yeah, bro, like I'm always open. Search me, X-A-Y-H-I-L, man, and uh, listen to everything. I'm telling you now, you get on my Spotify, you're going to hear a lot of my songs and like 50 million features because that's who I am. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's the greatest thing, bro. Well, dope, bro. Yes, Thanks bro. Uh, for, for taking the time out, bro. And I always got to end every show thanking Daryl from Bookkeeper for giving me the show. We're on like, I think it's, this might be the last episode of season two. I don't know. But we're on like episode 20 something. It's been a year since I started the show and like the guests keep getting better. And I keep learning about a lot of artists and making friends. Um, so I appreciate you being on. Shout out Daryl for letting me talk for an hour every couple of weeks. Um, and thanks y'all who watch and tune in next time. Peace. Not gonna lie, so when I was younger, I would say like, you know how we all go through this identity crisis type thing when we're younger? That's good. Like, yeah, kind of. Like you you don't want to be like- be Friends, indie friends. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so do, do wonders like AI anomalies. Her I know that, right? Saga, who was on, rap on, on the same top. beats. You're definitely more lyrical. So like you're not- I actually knew a guy in Miami that he was going to the same gym. And I tweeted like last week that someday I'm gonna have a song with him. I don't know how it's gonna happen, but it's gonna happen. Um, so <laughs>